Okay, so we have Jada Sklo here. She's a Remax agent. Which Remax agency? Uh, the Woodlands and Spring. The Woodlands and Spring, man. You got some big houses up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, she wants to update uh, up her real estate. Sorry, Facebook and Instagram game. And uh, um, so we're coming here doing some Q and A's between the home inspection and the real estate agent, our, our arch nemesis, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she has a few questions and uh, what do you got? Yeah, well, first I just wanna say like, I am so, first of all, I love working with you guys and I love your Instagram feed right now. If you're not on these guys, what's your handle? It's uh, home inspector underscore TX. They yeah. are amazing. I am learning stuff all the time, listening to your, you know, little snippets or whatever. Oh, Honestly, thanks. I think it's yeah. great. So yeah, we try to keep fun, it short quirky. and educational, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really good. So it's part of the reason why I wanted to uh, sit down with you, but yeah, I've got a couple of questions. And so the first one is, uh, what's the funniest thing or quirkiest thing that's ever happened? You guys must see everything. Yeah. And what's happened in the in an inspection? Yeah, we have we had we do have a few of those stories. So like, um, one of it was actually when I was like two years in or three years in, and I was like inspecting this like dump. Like <laughs> they had like five window units, and they were telling me their eight their electricity bill was like seven hundred dollars. And in my routine, I have to go through and turn on all the lights and open up all the the doors and the tenant was like on me, you know, like following her on it. And I went to open up this door and he like slammed it in front of me. And I'm like, oh man, I got to open up everything. And he was like, no, 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 don't go in there. That's where the raccoon lives. And I was like, <laughs> oh my, are you kidding? No, no, for real. That's the thing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you do see it all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, your top three things w that you come across time and time again, we see them in inspection reports, but what would you say is your top three things that you just see, regardless of whether the house is new or, or whatever? Okay, so not even the top three things, the top two things okay. that, I mean, like, it's almost guaranteed to be on your report 100% is your roof and your HVAC system. Yeah, like the home inspector is going to recommend for a roofer. He's going to recommend for an HVAC system. So, like if you're a new agent or even an agent that's been in the field for a long time, have a good roofer and a good HVAC system. And the main reason is, is we are required to um, service your AC unit and your roof AC units every year, which no one does. I don't even do that, right? Yeah. And then your roof every four years. That that I do do because that it gets a mess if you don't do it. Yeah. But, and most people don't do that either. So we get on the roof, we're gonna find something, even if it's small, a few damaged shingles and some caulking, but still. And then uh, the service of the AC unit, we get in, we open them up and they're dirty, they're air, leaking air, filters dirty all the time. All I wasn't time. thinking that you were gonna say that necessarily. I was actually thinking that it was gonna be more like caulking, you know, that comes up all the time, that regular, oh. you know. Okay, yeah, there is like the regular maintenance stuff that shows yeah. up all the time. I was just thinking like big ticket yeah, items. Yeah, big ticket items, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. So like things you would negotiate on, so. Gotcha. Yeah, caulking's on every single report. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Which GFCIs, is, yeah. you know, those are on yeah. every report too, but I was thinking yeah, things you might like, stuff. Yeah. yeah, negotiate on, sense. yeah. yeah. So with things like caulking and just that kind of regular stuff, mm -hmm. would you say from a seller perspective that it would be a good idea to just get it caulked before, before listing? Um, I don't know. I'd almost say service your roof and your AC unit because okay. even if you do caulk your exterior property, we're going to find something. Like I love that. That's, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's really good Yeah. Advice. So like if you do your due diligence and be like, hey, I fixed my roof and I fixed my AC unit and then all this other stuff, they're gonna ask for something, yeah. you know, most of the time. And then, but you as the seller's agent, it's a lot easier to ask for caulking than it is to be like, give me five thousand dollars for your roof, you know, yeah. something like that. That's so, great advice. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I wouldn't even worry about the caulking. I just just go, go just, with the big ticket items. Yeah, get go, them serviced. Yep. That makes sense. Thank you. That's yeah, good. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm from Canada, as you, I think you know. Uh, we come from a really super cold climate that is. Uh, uh, when we have foundation issues there, it's a really big deal. It right. is a really big deal. So when I first started here in real estate in Houston area, came up against the first time with the foundation and I was like, oh my God, you know, it's right. foundation issues, whatever. Because you have a lot of rock up there, I think. Well, it's so dry mm -hmm. and it's just, yeah, and so cold mm -hmm. that if you have issues, it's, it's a big issue. So here... I'm finding it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Right. So when do you think, Chris, 
would be the time where it's like, this is a really big issue. So that's actually a kind of a trick question, but it's still okay. Uh, so that's actually one of the biggest problems that are scares in the Houston area that is not really that big of a deal. Like, so there's a lot of foundation companies out there. And interesting fact is foundation companies do not need to be licensed. They're not regulated whatsoever. So mm. if you wanted to go open up a foundation company. <laughs> I don't. Tomorrow <laughs> and just start, yeah. buy yourself some yeah. jacks and peers, you can start it. Wow. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind. And they don't need a, an engineer to start uh, lifting these properties. What they do is they'll scare you into lifting up your house when it's not that big of a deal. And so they'll be like, oh, your house is off an inch and you need to peer it up. Yeah. Well, you got to think, how much is an inch? You know, like, and yeah. how big is your property? So our, we have clay and sandy soils and they're constantly moving all the time and they're going to flex and move. And what you really want to focus on is with foundation issues is think like how water moves. How does mm -hmm. water move around your property? And it could be as simple as just a gutter pouring in one spot, driving away all the yep. soil, yep. and that can cause your property to drop. You move that gutter, you fix the soil, your your house can actually lift back up. Yeah, so it's kind of crazy. Yeah. So what I'd recommend doing if you before a foundation company ever works on your property is get a structural engineer first. Oh. So in there, I know it's another three hundred fifty bucks or four hundred dollars, whatever it is, to get it out there, but they have they do the math they draw the they know the stress and tolerances of the property mm -hmm. and you kind of go from there so oh, good point so it is a very long-winded yeah. answer no, to the question but don't go just with what foundation you can get three foundation companies and they'll all say three only, different yeah and they'll all say it needs to be mm -hmm. peered right but then a structural engineer will come in and be like you're fine it's only an inch and then yeah, so and go with the structural engineer because sometimes if you lift a property on just this side you're causing bows and stress in your mm -hmm. property that doesn't need to happen. Mm, that's really interesting. Yeah. I'm thinking too about a couple of deals that have completely fallen apart because, because of, of that, right? Issues. Because yeah, because people get scared and mm. uh, you know, you get one foundation company out there and they give like a ridiculous $9,000. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So that's, that's interesting. So the other uh, big scary monster is um, especially in this climate is stucco. Right. So, Sometimes, uh, you know, we've come across issues where it's just becomes a huge dollar to fix, potentially fix. Just talk to me about stucco and Houston. Okay. So that is... It's a loaded question, that, I know. <laughs> that, that's a good one. Uh, so stucco is a, is a very iffy topic in Houston. You know, the newer builds have found out that the, they've done a really good job at putting it out on in the most case. Like I, even my neighborhood right here is covered in stucco and yeah. there's only been one problem house yeah. over there, which yeah. is, which is really nice. But stu if you do have stucco, it's, you treat it just like your roof every four years, every four to five years, you have to go around and reseal it back up yeah. uh, because the number one thing that destroys stucco is water. Like right. it, it ruins it yeah. <laughs> like yeah. really fast. It just gets in there, it holds it. And then it just will start to fall apart. Mold. You're talking like actually stucco falling off. Wow. So, um, if you are purchasing a property and there is stucco and it is a little bit older, just get a stucco, an intrusive stucco test. Like right. uh, me as a home inspector, I'm not allowed to go intrusive, but I can let you know, be like, hey, these are some warning signs. Yeah. yeah. But then you need a stucco specialist to come out and then do the drill holes. I know it's expensive, but even one side of stucco is $10,000, you know, just, yeah. and that's low. That's a low yeah. end, you know. It's amazing. <laughs> It's totally amazing. I hope you know, I answered that question. Yeah, no, yeah. no, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. One of the things that um, that I deal with international buyers all the time. I don't know if it's because I'm Canadian or whatever. I sort of attract <laughs> expats or what have you. But we all have our um, niche. Yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, one thing that I love about you guys is um, the delivery of the information that you give. So right. from from your inspectors, all, from you all the way down, you know, from your your inspectors. It's really, and, and I think most realtors would agree with me too, that that's the scary part about right. working with inspectors is like, how are they going to be delivering this information? Because it can be like a fear mongering situation. Um, your guys are really good. But one of the things with international buyers, they're not comfortable with a lot of things like termites and stucco and issues with our, with our climate or whatever. And I think you guys do a heck of a job you know, kind of educating as you go along. So um, I guess my question is, what do you think, do you actually go through with your inspectors? And 
Oh, a little oh, one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you actually teach your inspectors how to deliver? Because I've had some inspections that weren't quite delivering the information right. like you guys do. Yeah. Finn um, can make it in the video. <laughs> yeah, so that's a really great question. Uh, you know, that's a fantastic question. So yes, actually we train for almost a whole month on how to deliver a report. Really? You know, I say this all the time, finding the problems is easy. Understanding where the problems come from is easy. Uh, the hard part is taking the information and and putting it in putting it in the report, taking the information, putting it in the report, and translating it in a clear manner. Yeah. So we sit down and I literally we literally role play. Like they go out do a home inspection at the end of the month with a, a trainee, then they come in, they build the report, mm -hmm. and then they sit down with me and review it and. And I'll be like, well, how are you going to explain this? How are you going to explain this? And the biggest thing that you have to bring up to them is let them know what's normal in a 15-year-old home and what's not normal in a one-year-old right. home, or yeah. what's normal in a 60-year-old home. Yeah. And you and you break that and you break that in. Yeah. yeah. So no, yes. exactly. The answer to your question is yes, and it's a very it's very important to do your due diligence to express to the client and that's one of the hardest part of our jobs is that, expressing that information. Well, I know the very first time that I met you, <laughs> but that was the question that yeah. I was asking was like, uh, are you guys fear mongers? <laughs> yeah, no, and like, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. Like, yeah, and it is a good topic to yeah. hit. It's like, are you scary? Are you fear mongers? Yeah. And no, we just want to educate yeah. people. And we actually got called, you know, scary inspectors in the past because we let someone know, uh, Dad, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. I mean, all kinds of messes today. Yeah, so um, uh, that there had galvanized water lines and yes. we saw pinholes, yeah. and the agent was like, "She's like, so you're telling me all galvanized water lines are bad in in Houston?" I was like, "Yes." <laughs> As a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then she was like, and then she was like, "No, you're just scaring them. You're not setting the expectation." I was like, "No, we let them know. Yeah. Any home in this neighborhood's gonna have galvanized water lines, yeah. but they need to understand." what they do yeah. and they have to prepare to replace yeah. these and, and everything is fixable everything well, is fixable right? yeah. yeah we let them know you can repair it but you just want to set the expectation that they're going to have to fix it moving in you might not even be able to negotiate on it and that's yeah. one thing that we just started adding in was like negotiations like mm -hmm. are they going to be able to negotiate on this right. and uh and most of the time i would be like you might not be able to i help them with that yeah i know it's not really our job but like we've gotten pretty good at explaining it explaining it to people so we give them a top three yeah hey these are the top three things you want to worry about and you know you talk with your agent and get yep. come up with a strategy yep. on how to negotiate it's awesome yeah well thank you and <laughs> just the last question is what can we with my fellow realtor friends and whatnot what how can we make uh, your job easier? What can we do to help the process and so, not hinder it? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, actually the best thing to do is just get along, you know, find someone that you work well with or a team you work well with and get along because it's, it's not about like, you know, your job making it easier, my job making it easier. It's our job to make the client's life easier because I read this article way back, but you, did you know that it, it is more stressful to buy a home than getting a divorce. I don't doubt it at all. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, doubt so it. And we're managing those emotions. The mo yeah, we're managing right. those emotions. Yeah. There's a lot going on. So I could say there's a missing shingle and someone like, oh, <laughs> you know, exactly. like so, yeah. yeah, so our goal is, is to try to set the expectations for the clients, you know, tell the story about a property, properly clarify it for them so it makes you, your life easier, the client's life easier, my life easier. So they don't have them these unreasonable expectations. So maybe just whenever, before they get the home inspection, be like, hey, there's gonna be a lot of stuff on this, but let's yeah. try to focus on the important stuff. Mm -hmm. They're gonna tell you everything about this property. Yeah. So if you set the expectation before, and then we set the expectation at the end, then they can get a better understanding of how the process works. That's awesome. Yeah. That's why I love working with you guys. <laughs> yeah. No, I that's great. Grew up in it. I've yeah, I grew up in it. Yeah, I've been doing it a while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Chris, for taking the time. I'd yeah. love to do this again. I've oh, got yeah. tons more questions. When I was walking out the door, Jeff was asking, ask him this, ask him that, <laughs> ask him that as an ele electrician too. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not, just pump the brakes. I'm not getting this heavy right off the bat. But yeah. no, I really appreciate your time. Yeah, tell them to follow me on uh, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I definitely yeah. will. And Instagram for yeah, sure. Yeah, and then uh, what's your Instagram handle? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll I'm find it. And we'll, put, we'll put it in the uh, information below. It'll be right. There. I have one. I yeah. just have <laughs> to find it. That's great. So that's Janice. If you have any real estate needs, uh, give her a call. And then home inspection hey, needs. Chris.
Yeah. Absolutely. Give Thanks so much. Yeah, Thank definitely. you. All right. All right. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye.